Hello Makers! Welcome to 3D Maker Noob! I'm Joe, and today we are going to talk about the Veleman Vertex Nano. Stick around! Welcome back Makers! It's time to talk about what could be the smallest 3D printer kit on the market at the moment, and that is the Veleman K8600, better known as the Vertex Nano. And looking at the side of it, you can actually see why it's called Nano. I have played around quite a bit with this printer now and wanted to share with you my initial thoughts. I assembled this printer during a live stream, which took me about three and a half hours to put together. So even though the printer is small, the time it takes to assemble it is quite abundant due to so many parts that go into it. Now the Nano has a build volume of 80 by 80 by 80 millimeters. It comes with an LCD display, takes full size SD cards and also comes with a magnetically removable tiny build plate, complete with a tiny build tag sheet. Complementing this is an E3D V6 clone hotend, and most of the printer is actually folded metal and it also has a few plastic injection molded parts. The googly eyes, however, were my audition as they were requested during the live stream, so I had to comply. What it does not have, however, is a heat bed, so you will be limited to PLA type filaments with this printer, which is kind of to be expected with a printer this size. Needless to say, auto leveling is also not there as it pretty much would be useless. And another thing it lacks, which on the other hand should really be included is a part cooling fan. Once the printer was assembled, that's where the frustration kind of began. The Z offset procedure is it's a bit confusing as you need to download a couple of G code files from the Velamin site, or at least that's what the instructions say, and run a series of steps to get it right. This was also more frustrating as the models I had sliced prior to the stream through Simplify 3D didn't yield any prints as the no nozzle kept repeatedly crashing into the build plate. So with every failed attempt to print, I uh, had to run the calibration process all over again, which made it really frustrating. I then decided to download a pre-sliced G-code from the Veleman site and use some Veleman PLA to go along with it. Now that was a success, initially. After I ended the live stream, I left the printer running and came into the office the following morning to find a complete mess of spaghetti. Now during the print, there was some layer shifting on the y-axis and that resulted in a failed print halfway through. I decided to re-lubricate all the rods and the lead screw um, with some proper bearing grease and I tried to run the print once again, again with the same result. Now I spent most of the next day playing around and trying to extract the start and end G code from the pre-sliced models so I can enter it into Simplify 3D in order to run my own prints. However that turned into a complete failure as for some very weird reason the printer was retracting all the filament all the way through the bounding tube whenever the hot end started to move downwards to ball, towards the build plate. It, it does have an automated process to feeding the filament which makes it very useful. All you do is put about one and a half centimeters of filament into the, um, into the, uh, the stepper motor and it just feeds it all the way through quite fast I might say. It slows down up to about here and then just slowly starts extruding. And the measurement is actually quite spot on. However, having given up completely on Simplify 3D, I then decided to run the Veleman version of Repetier. Now I threw in a 3D Benchy, 
Yes, I know it's a 3D Benchy, but it's a 3D printer. And no matter what, I will always try to print a Benchy with any 3D printer that comes in here, except the 101 here. <laughs> I sliced it with the default profile it came with at 0.1 millimeter layer height and ran it. Once again, same layer shifting issues. So I decided to maybe try running something a bit more easy for the printer and in 0.20 millimeter layer height. That result was a Pikachu, which I can only describe as having had leg issues when he was transporting his body through time. This is 24 hours worth of trying out different prints and failing. At this point, I was ready to give up, to be honest. But as you know, I'm nothing if I'm not persistent. And so I decided to soldier on and trying to tweak Repetier or Repetier, even though I can barely find my way around it. I tweaked the speed as a the default was 50 millimeters per second, which felt a bit too fast for this printer. So I dropped it down to 40 millimeters a second. And I also played around with the uh, speed seconds for the uh, speed settings for the outer layer, retraction, and so on. I reran Pikachu and the result was finally a complete print. The results were nothing impressive, obviously, and that was something somewhat expected due to the lack of a part cooling fan. The stringing around the ears was quite insane and the lower part of the face showed a certain amount of heat issues with uh, filament sagging. It's due to the fact that the PLA was not cooling down quick enough to counteract the overhang. However, in terms of finish, it wasn't half bad. So this, this told me that this printer has potential. I then decided to tweak the retraction settings even further and then throw in some red 3D prints PLA as I'm quite used to that filament by now and know the settings fairly well. Finally, I started getting some decent prints, which to be honest, I was very happy with because they came out okay, even though once again, no part cooling fan. Now the first test print was this Squirtle right here. It came out as good as I would have expected it to from the Nano. And it was by no means disappointing. Yes, it's a far cry from perfect, but still an acceptable outcome, which made me really happy. After that, I jumped on the finit, fidget, finit, fidget spinner train and I printed myself the smallest one I could find. It actually printed perfectly fine. The ball bearings fit right in without any issues whatsoever. And I have spinning it um, ever since. I now can see why all the hype. So being confident of the print settings that I had found, I decided to run the Benchy once again. Yes, this time though, with much more success and quite surprised to be honest, as it wasn't half bad. Yes, usual heat issues on the bow of the Benchy but it fully printed nonetheless. Overhangs are, are okay. Bridging is fine. Detail is there. Chimney looks spot on. So once again, part cooling fan and this printer will do amazing prints. I then decided to print a frog that I found on Thingiverse as I wanted something slightly bigger while it printed well, the layer shifting started happening again, prompting me to reduce the speeds even further. So I went down to 
30 millimeters a second because if it wasn't for the fact of the layer shift and once again the the steep angles and the overhangs it printed quite nicely and 30 millimeters a second is the speed that it's been running at ever since now the prints are completing and they look okay all of them printed in 3d prints pla filament just so i can keep the settings consistent and not having to tweak anything i finally decided to run kirby as that has no overhangs or stringing and would be pretty much the perfect kind of model to print on the vertex nano because it showed that it can print quite well when it doesn't have these these bits and pieces of overhangs and stringing on the model it came out very very well apart from the slight z banding i'm sure i can tweak the settings maybe the extrusion multiplier but other than that it actually printed very well so what do i like about the sprinter the concept of this kit is extremely inviting and Velamen have quite a history of making educational kits in electronics some of which i used to buy when i was a kid it's also a great printer kit to teach kids or adults alike the basics of how a 3d printer functions there is also no need to discuss how easy it is to transport this little printer because it might actually fit in a large pocket and let's face it if you uh, put a desk blowing fan in the printer's direction it most likely will solve some of the if not most of the overhang and stringing issues that it produced in some of the prints what lets this printer down though are several things starting from the instructions the build was a bit slow as the instructions can be a bit confusing more frustrating was the fact that i spent over an hour prior to the live stream gnawing on my desk and arranging all the parts and screws as listed in uh, the guide step by step in order to make the build more efficient and faster as it was a live stream now while the instructions illustrate extremely clear and large photos which are great those photos are not always in the right order and you end up thinking that you skipped a part only to find out that the part you thought you missed comes at a much later stage also they might tell you that you need certain screws to be prepared for that stage and then you end up not using them having to retrace your steps to see if you missed anything while all along you actually didn't need them the z offset procedure is more complicated than it should be on the instructions that were on the site noting that a youtube video uploaded by velamen actually shows a completely different process to leveling the bed which looks much easier this would have made my life much more pleasant due to the fact that when the nozzle dove down into the build plate during the live stream some of the z and y carriage screws lost their tight fit making z wobble more prominent and to retighten re those i will need to take apart half of the printer as they are located in a very hard to reach place now the printer does come with a usb outlet However, the USB is located under the build plate, as in inside the printer, facing downwards, covered by a sheet of metal and four screws, make it impossible to plug in and print or calibrate at the same time through tethering. Now, Another thing is the default profile that came with Repetier or Repetier. It's not tuned for the printer correctly. Someone who is just starting out will have a few issues printing properly as there is too much tweaking to be done to get it to the right settings. The lack of a part cooling fan is also something I just can't get over. 
the printer does have room to put it on, even if it's a small 30 by 30 millimeter fan. So I believe it could have been included somewhat, even if it was a single fan cooling both the hot end and the print. Unfortunately, the board does not have any inlets for any additional fans, or at least none that I could find. Finally, the price. At $350, it's not cheap. And with companies worldwide constantly lowering kit prices for, as Angus puts it, the race to the bottom, I do believe it will not be the ideal choice for a lot of potential buyers. I do understand the idea of educational kits. And I also know that Velamin focus on quality. But paired with the fact that it lacks basic features and still needs work on the simple things gives it a huge disadvantage, even if it were $100 cheaper than it is. This is not Velamin's first printer. In fact, it's their third model, as far as I know. So certain things should be a given. I mean, not even an SD card is included in the kit to get you started. Now, that's not to say the Nano is bad, far from it. It is an educational kit after all, and schools would benefit highly from a kit this type. Starting from me, as I will most likely be giving this printer to my daughter to learn from and to help with so she can start printing, as it's time she had her own printer and not hog any of mine. And this is just the right size and it has the right feel to it. Plus those googly eyes make it very hard for me to stay mad at it. Also, to be completely honest, I believe that with a part cooling fan, an E3D V6 original and a 0.15 millimeter nozzle. Oh, now that would be a recipe for some gorgeous miniatures on this printer, don't you think? That is it for me guys. I will leave a link in the video description where you can find more information on the Vertex Nano, both in the EU and in the US. Usual disclosure, the printer was purchased by myself as part of the budget printer series I have embarked on and was not compensated in any way for this review. All thoughts on this review are my own and therefore opinions might vary which is why it's important for you to do your research first. Thank you very much for watching guys. I would like to especially thank my Patreons. It's their support that helped me get more printers in here to produce and also to you guys for watching my videos and help me keep on going to create content and get more printers and blabber on. If you enjoyed this review, please leave a like or a comment and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, happy making guys.